Good morning, St. James. I hope you guys are all keeping safe and warm this morning. Now, I know we'd all rather be together this morning, but I'll be honest. I'm pretty sure I would have broken my steering wheel if I had to drive down Cape Hart Road again this morning. I have now driven in whiteout conditions and I can saf safely say it's nothing I ever want to do again. For those of you who think driving in these conditions is just a Midwestern tradition, I can safely say it's a tradition I'll be happy to break. Speaking of breaking tradition, that's the name of our current sermon series. Over the next several weeks, we're going to take a look at ways Jesus strayed from the customs and traditions of his time. Now, Jesus wasn't doing this to be a rebel. He wasn't doing this to bring attention to himself, and he wasn't doing this to make people mad. Jesus broke tradition to prove a point, that while traditions and customs can serve a positive purpose, people are what mattered most. And when traditions and customs keep us from loving people, then they need to be broken. Today, we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. The passage begins, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. Now, a little backstory for you. Jesus had just preached his famous Sermon on the Mount. Can you imagine? Imagine the feeling around everyone that day. His sermon was both captivating and controversial for the time. People remained close by for the chance to meet Jesus. And for many, the reason to stay is to get a chance to be healed by Jesus. There was all this excitement, and then a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. In that moment, I imagine the excitement came to a screeching halt. A man with leprosy, an unclean man, dared make his way through the crowd and to the feet of Jesus. Now, a few things for you to know about leprosy. Physically, Leprosy was a skin and flesh disorder that brought about a literal decay of the person's flesh while they were still alive. They lived in agony. In time, leprosy caused dif disfigurement. Their nose, their ears, they would fall off and tormented the, its victims until they died. Socially, the leopard also suffered anguish. Leprosy was highly contagious and there was no cure. Out of fear, lepers were ostracized. They were forbidden to have personal contact with anyone, including their family and friends. From the day they were first declared unclean, they were cut off from everyone. In fact, in Leviticus, we read that lepers were required to wear torn clothes, have long unbound hair, cover their face with their hand and shout unclean wherever they go and live apart from others. All of these things were warning signs to other people that the person had leprosy. All of their relationships, everything they had worked for was all taken from them. Their reputation and their name were marked and erased by their illness. Their Identity became their disease. They were simply known as leper. Now, leprosy is not something we regularly deal with in modern society. But think back to 2020 and the early days of COVID. I bet if you look closely, you'll find some parallels in the way lepers and those diagnosed with COVID in the early days were treated. They were shunned, ostracized. Their choices questioned. And honestly, much like lepers in Jesus' time, people with COVID suffered silently because they were afraid of anyone coming, finding out. They hid it until they absolutely couldn't. They were afraid to ask for help due to their own fears of being shunned and ostracized. But this leper in our story, he wasn't afraid. He knew who Jesus was. And he knew that if anyone could help him, it would be Jesus. So he asks, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Remember what I just said? The leper knew. This statement shows us that. 
Lord, if you are willing. The leper is saying, look, I know you can do this. I know what your power is. I just want to know if you want to do it. The leper knew of Jesus' power. He knew of what Jesus was capable of. But he also knew how he had been treated by others for so long. How those who could have helped turned their backs. How those who could have comforted only condemned. So the leper simply asks, Jesus, help me if you want to. And notice how the leper doesn't actually ask to be healed. He asks to be made clean. The leper was not just asking to be cured from the physical ailment that he had. He was asking for restoration for his body, for his mind, for his heart. For being made clean meant the leper would be accepted. The passage continues. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed of leprosy. Did you catch that? Yes, Jesus said yes, and Jesus did heal the man. But did you see how he did it? Did you hear how he did it? He did it by touching him, by going against the rules, by breaking tradition. Jesus could have just spoken the words, but he knew the man needed more than that. He needed to be touched. He needed to be made, feel, made to feel that he wasn't less than. This man needed to experience compassion, care, and ultimately, community. And while Jesus' words healed the man of his leprosy, his touch healed more than that. You see, Jesus touched him. And in doing so, he saw, showed that he didn't see the traditions of ceremonial cleanliness as more important than this man's brokenness. By touching the leper, Jesus validated his humanity, he restored him to the community of human fellowship again. Jesus didn't turn away from the leper. He moved toward the leper, and he moved toward the leper with love. Jesus broke the rules to move toward the leper, and so should you and I. Why? Because at one time or another, we're all the leper. In fact, there's some of us watching this today saying right now, that's me. I'm the leper. And friends, the same Jesus that approached the leper in love approaches us the exact same way. Wherever love toward the misunderstood, the outcast, the broken, the marginalized, the lonely, the sick, whenever love is shown, Jesus is there. Yesterday, I shared the message version of Micah 6 8 at Fran's service, but he has already made it plain how to live, what to do. What God is looking for in men and women is quite simple do what is fair and just to your neighbor, be compassionate and loyal in your love, and don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. God has made it plain to each of us what we are to do. We're to cast aside our prejudices and our preconceived notions. Be willing to let go of customs and traditions that pull us away from one another. We need to think less of ourselves and less highly of our own opinions and more of God, allowing God to be who leads us. And then, just go near. Tomorrow, we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And in doing so, we celebrate a man who refused to allow customs and traditions and, quite frankly, prejudices dictate how he loved others. Just like our friend Fran, Dr. King used his voice. He used his voice to be a champion for others. 
And he did this by moving toward them, not away. Time and time again, he moved toward people. And by doing so, lives were changed. Dr. King once said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy to a friend. I can't think of a more true statement. Love transforms, love heals, love restores, and love redeems. So friends, as we continue this journey into 2024 together, how about we become a church that moves toward everybody in love? Let's start today. How? Well, I'll give you just a few examples. Let's care for the people that we see on the street. You know, keep two or three little baggies in our car and offer them when we see someone in need. They include things like socks, non-perishable foods, a bottle of water, toiletries. And in doing so, instead of seeing the people on the corners with their signs at intersections and questioning what got them there, instead of turning our heads, let's move toward them. Let's find ways to serve others. Volunteer to help feed the poor and homeless. Help out in a school. Be like Fran and write letters to our Congress people about issues that affect the well-being of others. Find a role at the church and jump in. Get out of your comfort zones. Here's the thing. You can't move toward love if you refuse to leave the warm, safe places. And finally, this is probably the easiest but the scariest one. Just engage. Love the person who is right in front of you. You know, there's so much going on in our world that we can be pretty sure that the person next to us is going through something. And every person we encounter could use a smile or a helping hand. So let's say hello. Let's put down our phones and talk to people. Get to know them. Ask how their day is going and actually mean it. Don't let it just be something polite that you say. Ask that person's name and commit to praying for them. Don't worry that this person was a stranger. At one point, we were all strangers. Don't worry that you're different or have different viewpoints. Move toward that person. Move toward that person in love. You know, the story of the leper, yes, it's a wonderful story of healing, but it truly is a story of what love can do. It's a story of what happens when we're willing to move past traditions, when we're willing to go against what society and culture tells us, and we're willing to just love. So St. James, let's take the opportunity. Let's hold tight to it. And instead of moving away, let's move toward. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for warm homes and warm clothes, for a way for us all to connect when we can't be together. God, this being able to connect via Wi-Fi and internet and Facebook and YouTube. It's a way that we are able to move toward one another. God, in each and every day, let us seek out the opportunities that you give us to move toward others in love. Let us let go of our prejudices and our preconceived notions. Let us forget all those things that pull us away and let us be willing to wholeheartedly and with everything we are and everything we have, move toward others so that they can be healed by your love. God, at one point or another, each of us were the lepers. Each of us have felt outcasted and alone. God, it doesn't have to be that way. 
Each of us have it within our power to heal, to heal and comfort instead of condemn. So God, allow each of us, let us use Jesus' example of what guides us. Let us use people like Dr. King and our friend Fran. Let us step into their legacies as well. And let us move toward, move toward our future, move toward each other, move toward people that we haven't even met yet in love. We pray all this in the strong name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me. I cannot wait to be with you guys again in person. We are planning on having United Wednesday this Wednesday. I believe breakfast burritos are on the menu. So make plans to join us for that. And we will be back in person next Sunday. See you soon, friends.